This is the Neo Books call on Monday, July 29th, 2024. Uh, we're talking about extraterrestrials and the movement of white dudes to support Kamala Harris for president. Uh, but really, we're here to talk about Neo Books. Uh, Klaus sent a nice note on Mattermost saying he can't make today's call. He's on the road. Uh, so we should not expect him. Uh, and I, I don't have an agenda right now, but I'm it's weird. Um, I'm I've been using Massive Wiki a whole bunch around a bunch of different issues, some of which, a few of which are neobook uh, related, uh, but I feel like I'm making progress on thinking like a neobook and generating interlinky wiki pages. I'm also trying to master a cross-posting regime, which I haven't quite gotten into a rhythm, uh, but I want to I want to originate, mo probably I'll author things in Massive in Obsidian, then I will post them on Massive. Then I will copy paste them into Substack, send them out as a Substack newsletter, which I've started. Then I will copy paste them into LinkedIn as an article. And the, at the footer of each of those, it will say this article cross posted to here and here, which would be the other two links. Of the three, the more interesting one should be the Massive Wiki link because there, you will be able to follow the trails into all the rest of the things that are that are related that I'm posting about, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That the the massive wiki face of this will be the most interesting one, even if we don't have yet enabled features where you can converse, riff, do all the other neo booky kinds of things. But but in that sense, I'm hoping that the super distribution, mini super distribution of a post on a variety of media that says, hey, the interesting thing is over on uh, Massive Wiki might be interesting. Did that make any sense? Yeah, love it. Um, uh, I might, well, I, once you get going, I might add Medium in too. Um, I, I think I wouldn't say this has been cross-posted to these other places, but I think I would at the very top say this, this originally appeared on. Oh, that's true. Did you say medium in? Uh, yeah. Which is what? M medium, sorry. Oh, add medium in. Yes, medium.com. And, <laughs> and I have a medium account. I've posted a little bit to it, not a lot. It's an interesting idea. I don't, I actually don't know who gets to see what when I post an article to medium, meaning I think most people get to see all medium posts only if they're a paid medium, medium member. And that's the part of the model, I think, but I, I'm not sure. Yeah, you can, I, it's been a long time since I've fiddled with Medium, but I think you can, you can make a deal with the devil with Medium. You can say, I want to post this so everybody can read it. Or I want you to help me make sure it gets distributed to people. So you have to put it behind the, the you know, please put it behind the paywall because I think you can do a better job of distribution than I can. And when you put it behind the paywall, then they do their best to put it in front of people because they have exclusive rights to some text. Yeah. And wow. and since this is a thing where you're posting outside anyway, I I would just you know say yeah, yeah distribute it to your. Oh, um, it, so basically, go ahead and put it behind, put it behind the, the paywall. Yeah, put it behind the firewall and the paywall. And I the uh, another thing. I don't know how well it would work, but um, if you. Yeah, I don't think it would work. I, if if you embed an image, like one of the images you embed, um, if you can put that, load it from a place where you get counts, um, it would be really oh. interesting to see the refer counts. So use the image, use the same image in all versions so that I get a good count of visitors across platforms from that image. Yeah, if if that would work, it may or may not. That's a great idea though. Um, oh. Some of the platforms will probably probably most of them will will not hot link an image they'd rather copy it to their cdn and then you won't see it so yeah um also mastodon and threads and x and facebook um, not necessarily in that order facebook yeah. is probably the big one um it's funny i'm i'm not using any of the short form socials at all now. Like I've got a Blue Sky account, Mastodon, I haven't even looked at it in ages. 
Um, threads, I open once and haven't looked back. Uh, Twitter, I use now and then because it still somehow has a thready pulse, um, <laughs> e even though it's been sort of blasted, it's, you know. It, it's easy for me to rattle those off. I am in the same place as you, but I am looking forward to to getting back into I, something like your your example is a shining example of something that I'd like to do, along with, you know, I, I would at least do Facebook. Um, well, actually, X sounds like a place where I should at least sort of post and something X. productive like the like, you know, these Substack posts, I can cross post them to X. Yes. Um, do I need to go to Zapier or uh, if this, then that? Or can I, is there another way to, can I automate some piece of this for God's sake, please? Do, do it by hand and then figure out what you want to automate. Oh, that's right. Do it. do it by hand. The do it by hand thing. Damn it. <laughs> um, cool. Anybody else with suggestions, thoughts, whatever's? Um, please document this on a on a wiki page and continue to update that. Cool. My my only reaction my only reaction is I just want to be an end user. Just sort it out and and make it easy for me to use in a way that serves the greater purpose. That's all I'm interested in. So techies take over. I'll give end user feedback. Thank you. Which says something like. Gosh, wouldn't it be good if Massive Wiki in the long run had a page that said, here are my accounts on these other platforms. Just please mirror this, cross post this to those accounts automatically. And sometimes you have format choices. Like on LinkedIn, I'm still a little confused. You can do a regular little post on LinkedIn or you can write an article on LinkedIn. And I don't know the valence difference, the distribution difference, the meaning difference. I, I'm not quite sure. I think articles are meant to be components of what they want to look like substacks. I think, I think they're trying to sort of emulate substack by having somebody have a, a series of articles under a banner, under a, a head, under an, a title. Uh, but I'm not sure because they don't look all that different. Well, uh, let me, let me put, let me give you a frame. Think Please. of the post as a mini nugget and the article as a chapter, a mini chapter within a chapter of a neo book. But you could write the same text in either format, right? You could oh write... yes, yeah. You can. It's it's a link thing. I think the posts are short, pithy, and a link. Yeah. I mean, that's how I see it. Um, so if you want to do something frequently, but you know, if you want something, uh, you know, along the lines that Klaus does, uh, you know, it takes a little bit more thought to to get something to capture people's attention. Okay. So I'm aiming. I'm aiming then to do a series of articles. Is, is I mean, if, if I'm going to write to a substack, well, you can do both. You can do both. You yeah, can, yeah. You, you can, yeah, exactly. Synergize them. Synergize. Haven't, yeah. heard, haven't heard that in so long. It's an okay word now. No, it should be. It's not English, but it should be. It comes from travel to long, the land that Pete comes from. Um, any other uh, neo booky thoughts, questions, uh, advances? Uh, just a question back to to the um, definition of of neo books, and we started that work, and we. Uh, I'm wondering if if we want to finish that work, or if it was just an exercise in a conversation for for a little bit. I think we would like to finish that exercise. We have a Google Doc manifesto brewing, which we have not really uh, successfully done. Uh, it's over, I'm in it now. I will post the chat. I will post the uh, link in the chat. Uh, and we could spend some of this time co-writing, pair programming in it if we want. I don't know. Does anybody else see value in in? Uh, I see a lot of value in that, yes. Yeah. Um, uh, right, right now, um, Uh, right now, 
I, 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 I love the, the material that's here and it also looks pretty far away from a, like a shared, you know, easy, easy to understand definition of neobooks and what, uh, what it does, how it does it. I think we have to talk it through. Yeah. To get anywhere near to that. Yeah. So process wise it, you know, um, I will also, uh, I, th I think this is a repeat, but um, I'll say it again. Uh, I, I like the, um, the structural format of the Agile Manifesto. Um, uh, we don't need to talk about the actual content, but uh, the way it's structured, um, they have a set of principles and then uh, shorter and shorter statements of it. Um, and so what you see on the homepage at the very front uh, is easy to read and, you know, is like four um, short, you know, very short, four, four word phrases or something like that. So I think actually two and three word phrases and one of those words is a preposition. Um, so the, I, I have a, a very strong, I, I value very strongly their, their, collapse collapsibility and expandability of that uh, information structure. And I, and I think we're not done until we get something like that or better. Well, so what are the um, subcomponents that are collapsible for us? Because I think that maybe Jose's subtitles get somewhere toward that. Sort of. Yeah, I agree. Um, and, you know, and, and the titles on the uh, principles. Um, and for everybody who hasn't, uh, doesn't have it handy, here's the link to the Agile Manifesto page. So the, the principles as stated are an interesting set of things. Um, uh, I, these are more like core beliefs for me, um, uh, rather than structural definition, definitional, um, components. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think like, for instance, uh, um, nuggets is, you know, a core, I don't know what you would call it. Um, I don't know if that's a principle or a design, you know, design construct or what. I think design, but, I think design principles is a nice phrase for that. Yeah. So, so then I'm not sure that nugget is the right thing there. It might be uh, um, uh, decomposition, composability, um, networked or something like that. Can we string that into one sentence? Can we say uh, recomposable nuggets? That, are... that was the interconnectedness yeah. piece, which maybe the word interconnectedness is not the right term, but the recomposition component is is that that number four, right? Um, I I have a let's see. The, I, I like this, but the interconnectedness just talks about the it it essentially says. Let me let me back up. Um, mm -hmm. I have a way of saying it. Um, uh, I, I think it's uh, chunking, naming, linking. Um, so the the chunk, the the putting things into things that will later be composed is actually kind of the first. For for me, it's the first thing that you do. You put things into chunks, and then you decide um, how am I going to name this chunk so that I can link them together, right? Uh, so for me, that there are at least two things in operation, two major things in operation there. One of them is um, composable pieces, and then the other one is the composition of the pieces. Mm -hmm. uh, I was looking at it from a more sort of bigger design concept, which is mm -hmm. um, that what we want is things to link to each other, not to be standalone pieces of content, and that those things are um, assemblable 
from this individual nugget piece. And so the idea holistically, um, whether the right language is, is the language is right or not, the idea is the intent is not to make things stand alone and independent, right? So that's the principle. Um, Less like about that. how or the technical aspects of it, but more about the the idea that what we're talking about in neobooks here is that information should be recomposable Inter interconnected and not standalone um no. i like that and yeah. and i think without saying something about the chunk size um the um it so um i think that's the drill down part right now now we need chunks i, I think it's what uh, i think it's well i i think it's i think it's where you start um so uh uh, I'm trying to imagine a book. I, I'll pick Go to Lesher Bach by uh, Hofstetter. Um, so the whole thing is interconnected. Um, but uh, saying that it's interconnected doesn't say anything about should the chunks be big? Should the chunks be small? Um, what what happens if I take this chunk and put it over here and take that chunk and put it next to that chunk? Do I still have a thing that that composes? So I think you can't just say, it's interconnected. There, there shall be interconnectedness. You also have to say there shall be small chunks, uh, to, to use the Weinbergian phrase, um, small pieces loosely joined, right? The saying the loosely joined part is kind of like, mm, that's really important. The small pieces to me is actually even more important and, and more foundational. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't disagree with that, that it is important um think if you want to stick with what's what's the four the four things on the front page mm -hmm. um i think interconnected trumps small um and so, i think yeah. i think that the smallness is an absolute component of this um i, I don't know where where the two sit so um, your subs down there, your subtitles down there, are open, collaborative, first principles, interconnected. I think I think we're not looking for single words to put in here because interconnected hypertexts are interconnected, and that doesn't differentiate us from hypertexts in any way at all. I think we need short sentences that are assert assertive and that are definitional for what's different about a neo book ish thing yeah. from other sorts of things. So yes, they need to be interconnected, but that just needs to be a word inside of short phrases. And I'm trying to do that at the top of the document. Now I'll do a screen share so we can sort of co-edit. But I'm trying I'm trying to figure out what are those statements that we can kind of agree with. So, you know, I, I like the first paragraph of the. Uh, Agile manifesto, and I think that I think we're you know partly we're talking about ideas, not books. So, so I think that the first statement should be about ideas, not books. And we can talk about how books are just a shiny object, whatever later. Uh, but I, I think this needs to be a, lo a slightly longer paragraph, like three sentences, four sentences of this length, that explains why this is a different thing. Um, and I don't know that we need to say instead of trapping ideas in the world and milking them for all their value, we are going to open them up and make them conversational and evolving. I, I don't know that we want something negative in there, but I'm not sure because I think a, a big motivation for the Neobooks project for me is how crappy uh, intellectual property dynamics are in today's world and how much we're overwhelmed by misinformation, disinformation. We're basically drowning in the info flood because we can't pin things and show things to each other in some way. So that, that's a piece of that, my motivation here. We can't maintain a, context. Right. That should be a blog post or, or an, an article. It, yes. it shouldn't be the core principles. Yes, good. Uh, but here I was thinking that our foundational units are nuggets, which are composable, reusable, conversational, evolving, a linked, and something else maybe. I, I was making a list, but I don't think a, a longish list like that is bad. Then, uh, and then this is sort of too simple and too complicated at the same time, but the nugget links are my seal in nature. And I have a thought in my brain that says, books are the fruiting bodies of the mycelial neobook web. 
basically. And they're just one manifestation. Another one could be a GPT. Another one could be a presentation. Another one could be a story told. But they re they're reusing the nuggets, and that's what's interesting. Um, so I'm trying to get that idea in here. I'm not sure if that's right. But that's why I put these lines in so far. And they're not beliefs or preferences as the <laughs> Agile Manifesto states, but I think that the elegance of the Agile Manifesto's this over that statements is hard to get to, which might mean that after two more iterations, we could get there if we sort of think through this and boil it down and then, and then you know, cook it differently. But I, I'm not seeing easily and intuitively those kind of comparisons, and I'm not sure we need to have this over that comparison. Well, as an example, like openness, um, copy left versus copy right. Uh, that's a design preference that covers open source, that covers lots of different things. How, how are we different from that? Well, it's it's one of the things that's one of the, the openness, right? Conceptual. So I've just added, which are open, composable, reusable, which I'd forgotten to put in there. And I think it should lead. So I, I think I've just covered that. Meaning, I don't know that we need to have a separate statement about openness. I'm sorry, where did you? Uh, I just oh, added, so you've I just, buried it in the. In I the just sentence. added the okay. word "open" as a for the lead attribute of nuggets, and and right. if the nuggets are open, then everything else should be open above it. But uh, okay. here here's something I would say: yeah. nuggets is a great idea, but people don't want nuggets. People want to change the way their lives works and how the world works of information. Nobody, nobody's craving nuggets. Well, except for everybody who loves chicken McNuggets, but still. <laughs> do you know that that's how Usain, I'm guilty? Guilty. Do you know, yes, do you know that that's how Usain Bolt survived his Olympics? He he was looking for anything at the Olympics that he could eat and keep down, and he ended up eating a hundred chicken McNuggets a day. Sorry, that was a bad sideline, but still, yeah, got to do what you got to do. Yeah, <laughs> Jay, could you zoom to 150, please? Yes. I'd like to return to something we spoke about last week about process and content and how do you, um, using one term, nuggets, give me an example of a content nugget versus a process nugget. Um, so a, a nugget could be a description of a process. There's no, no, and that would, that turns it into content. A, a nugget is a visible description of something mm -hmm. right and so you could be describing a thing or a process and, and uh, they're equivalent they're their content and i hate i really don't like the word content especially with a large c but 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 they are in that sense reduced to content the process is what we do around the nuggets and when i say that that the nuggets are composable reusable conversation evolving these words, so linked is a gimme. Like if, you, if you've ever written anything for the web, you've added a couple links to it, you've written linky text. Hypertext is a given now. That's not a differentiator. We love linky text. We're trying to do something better than linky text. And for me, the process elements, Rick, are that I can compose and recompose these. I, I can reuse them in other works. And it's okay that the same paragraph or the same collection of nuggets shows up in four books because we're trying to reinvent how books work. Um, uh, they're conversational because, and, and evolving because as people join a nugget and in two or three different ways, either by making comments or by suggesting poll edits or by forking and doing their own version of them, they are busy evolving the ideas in those nuggets like that. Um, and maybe the, the word is also contextual or context rich, something like that. Because I think a big piece of what makes Nuggets interesting is the metadata that we're all interested in associating with them. Jose, for you, it's like this Nugget is foundational because it links to these underlying thoughts. Uh, there are other ways of uh, other kinds of context that are interesting as well, which is this Nugget exists as a spoken word video over here and as an animation over here and as a first grade uh, primer over here. And it's the same idea that that lives in other in, in other forms in other places. And that's it's the same nugget of information. Like the, the nugget I like to think about a lot when I'm trying to picture how this works is um, assume good intent. And that's a very short nugget. Most nuggets would be more would have more prose. So let's assume that it's, it's assume good intent is the title of the nugget. 
and under it is some description of what what on earth that means and why why groups believe that. That would make that what would be a really nice nugget. Yeah, what will you describe to me is is a game. It's a, a a simple rule opposed to a first principle. I assume good intent feels to me like a first principle. Well, we can we can argue over that one, or dis, you know, what is the difference between a first principle and a a, and, a simple and, rule? And the problem with first principles is that we will disagree often and probably vigorously on what is the difference mm -hmm. between a first principle and a simple rule. And I'm not that interested in the ontological, uh, rhetorical, logical argument of what's at the bottom and what's at the top. I like Jose's approach of, hey, there are many different pyramids of thought out there, which represent frameworks of thinking and opinions and points of view in the world that'll describe why Trump says what he says and versus why Kamala says what she says. Uh, and that's that's really interesting and useful. But the moment you start dictating which is the foundational unit, we're gonna get into we're gonna get tangled in our shorts. I think I think that's my own my own take on that. And and we also have a, a plenty of disagreement here about what nugget size means. And I think that's going to continue to be an interesting sort of controversy for us. But I like to think of, I, I'm, I'm modeling nuggets on holons from Ken Wilber, about which I know only a little, only enough to be dangerous. But the idea that a holon is a thing that has sort of completeness in itself and is interesting as a unit. Uh, and then you build things out of the holon. There's kind of levels of, of structure built on top and out of the whole on. So for me, a nugget is a is a paraphrase. It's a it's a muggle friendly word for a whole on uh, that's living in the idea world. I'm I just that, uh, some... Go ahead. One of I was just going to say that the, that the, a nugget is for me. It, it's it's the smallest thing that it can be. It still express an idea clearly. That matches what I was saying. But nuggets roll up into larger entities that you might also think of as a nugget, kind of as a meta nugget, as a plural nugget. I don't know. Maybe they need a different name. Uh, but some nuggets are sort of larger than others and, and include the smaller units that you just described, I think. Is there a reason we use nugget instead of whole one? Uh, we had a bunch of conversations. Some people didn't like the word nugget. We went through a lot of alternatives. Um, I don't know. I use nugget because it's a very muggle friendly, shiny word. It's a, like a gold nugget, a nugget of an idea, a nugget of a concept. I, uh, happen to like it. And several times in our, in our ongoing neobooks conversation that came back to Jerry, this is your idea. What do you want to make of it? And I'm like, I'd like to call them nuggets. Cool. Thanks. And Holons to me immediately calls in Ken Wilbur and all of that thinking. And I don't want to do that explicitly. It's also an abstract, more intellectual word. And I'm trying to avoid that. I'm trying to make this pretty practical. I, uh, I, I appreciate that. Um, I think Nugget has even less meaning to a layperson than Holon. It's a friendly word, <laughs> but right. um, I, I think... I th I think um I think it's not more explanatory than whole on. And then the conversely, the reason I ask is because if somebody has worked already to have at least some, you know, some people understanding what a, a whole on is, um, then you know maybe we maybe it's good to draft on that. The uh, I I I would also have to say a whole on is kind of a very um, it's a uh, a technical word. Um, it does. It it's uh. You'd have to say whole on of information to make it mean what what you mean by nugget. So it's right. not perfect either. It's it's a way of saying a kind of structure, but it's not an instance of the structure. It's a class of the structure. Here's yeah, the. I, I liked the terms block or brick. Here um, are the here are the terms that came up the last time we had this conversation. So kernels, particles, fragments, patches, pearls. And you want block or brick? So <laughs> those those are terms that I I've used in the past in this concept the context, but I come from an architectural background, so uh, it makes sense to me linguistically because uh, that's the way I see the world. Yeah, I, you could call them Legos, idea Legos, but I don't like that. Bricks, bricks kind of calls out. Yeah, 
without saying the Br bricks is trademark. very textural uh, bricks takes my head immediately over to like building a wall mm -hmm. um and i'm so building trying... blocks yeah building blocks, mm -hmm. blocks well, the same yeah yeah and, I, and i'm kind of a lego refusenik i don't want to put that much plastic in the world um, even though I'm, we're guilty of buying a couple of Lego kits that are kind of cool. Um, but, but they, they absolutely represent composability for people in the world. Mm -hmm. Right. That, that, that's a very good virtue of them. They also hurt when you step on them, which is what a nugget should do. <laughs> I, I think it'd be helpful to have a layman's definition of nuggets. I mean, there is a definition there, but I think, uh, how are you going to define it in layman's terms? Uh, how are you going to define a nugget? In layman's terms, yeah. I think I, mean, I think you give people a couple examples and you say these right here are examples of of good nuggets. Uh, somewhere, somewhere a link or two away from the the first things on the homepage. I think that's a a, a reasonable thing to have. If I mean I it con or more more completely when you say when you are coining when you're you're making a new coinage um here's you know you have to say here's what i mean by nugget you you have yes. to yes the um again I, I i my sense is whatever terminology we use obviously we have to to create a definition as you just said peter but um my sense is it's less about defining the mechanics of these things and more about defining the benefits. It's not the features, it's the benefits. The and Agile keep... Manifesto doesn't, doesn't do benefits, though, much. Doesn't do benefits? Well, I think it does at the second level. So we're uncovering better ways of developing software. That, right. that's, the, that's the benefit. Better. better. Everything, everything benefit. else is... Everything else is not a benefit, but rather a preference. Right. And this, I like res responding to change over following a plan doesn't tell me what the benefit is. It says, hey, let's not make a plan. And then it's a how to. They're, exactly. they're talking about a how to. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, and so, so here's the 12 principles. And the uh, very top, patients. though, says um, we are uncovering better ways of developing software by doing yeah. it and helping others do it. So the, the benefit is at the very beginning, better ways of developing software. Which is why I said we're trying to help ideas exist better in the world or whatever that phrase is. That's why that's exactly why I put that as a lead sentence. Mm -hmm. that, that I was inspired I, precisely by that. Um, I think it's very interesting and thanks for the observation, uh, Jose, that um, benefits kind of outweigh, um, I was going to say Trump, benefits outweigh um, <laughs> uh, features. But but it's also interesting hearing Jerry and, and looking at the Agile Manifesto, even the principles. Uh, Jerry, if you click to the, the second page, scroll down and click. This one? Um, yeah, it's it's actually um, ways of doing it. And so it's, it's interesting that I think what happens uh, when you're transmitting the idea of the Agile Manifesto to somebody new, you say, you say the benefit and in your words, you're saying the benefit to me is, and I think the benefit to you is. So it's interesting that they didn't really put that into the framework and they let other people tell the story of the benefit. I think that's actually a really good thing. Um, I, I agree with Jose that if I'm trying to sell a widget, um, I, I ought to be selling the, I forget the old phrase, um, I, I want to sell. You know, uh, no. Um, there's an, a salesman's adage. You want to sell the finished product instead of the, I, I forget what it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll have to look it up. But, but I think this is a little bit different when you're when you're when you're building a uh, when you're building a movement. You don't put the benefits into the statement, the the statements of principle. Uh, you let the benefits be something that each person conveys to the next person um you know with with a lot of personal context between both of them mm -hmm. 
Okay. For the front page of the manifesto, uh, what, was this responding to change? I think there's something uh, lacking there in terms of shaping the future, co-designing the future. Uh, so, you know, there, there are concurrent processes in terms of being proactive, developing anti-fragility on the one hand, uh, resilience and adapting, mitigating against change on the other one. But I don't think we put enough effort into about how we're going to shape our future. And this this um, manifesto leaves unspoken the fact that, man, software development is a muddy mess right now. And there's so much wasted money. We don't know what we're doing. None of none of those critiques are here. None. They're just like, yep. we're doing better ways of developing software by doing it and helping others do it. We've come to value these distinctions. It it does, the, the right-hand small side of those phrases, the oppositions do actually call out what was happening at the time. Um, these are, are ex pretty explicit call outs of waterfall and um, big design up front and things like that. Yeah, um, and and it's hard to remember that at this you know this day and age because but the right hand side of that was how software was built because we inherited how, how to build software from how we, how to build bridges or airplanes. And they're even sort of tipping their hat to the old school because at the bottom they say that is while there's value in the items on the right we value the items on the left more. So yeah. they're saying hey we wrote a lot of software this old way but we think there's a better way and here's what and then the twelve principles are here's how. Like hue, hue to these processes. And and Rick, I think most of the 12 principles are very much process principles. It's, you can change requirements even late in development. Deliver, deliver frequently is process. Work together daily is process. Uh, build projects around motive of individuals is process design. Give them the environment they need. Trust, trust them to get the job done. Process, process, process. So th th this is very process heavy. Well, mm -hmm. it's software development. It's all process. <laughs> yeah. Well, you could be counting blocks of finished code. I mean, uh, you, you could be product oriented uh, and, and you could sort of write this in some other way that was much more about the finished product and uh, ratings, satisfaction ratings from users of the software or something like that. This, is, this has a different feel to it entirely, I think. Mm -hmm. Huh. What does that mean for us? And, and this is a very nice model. We don't have to follow this model. This, uh, I have a collection of manifesti. If you want to know, uh, I have a collection of, uh, oh, let's find out how many. I have a collection of 390 manifestos that I've found over time. 390. Because whenever somebody publishes a blanky blank manifesto, here's the Breivik video manifesto. Uh, Anders Breivik, the Norway attacker who killed... A, like 55 people in Norway back when, he had a manifesto. Ted Kaczynski's manifesto is in here. The Unabomber manifesto is in this list. Uh, this is a, a wide-ranging list. And it has as a subset bills of rights, which are forms of manifestos. Um, which, which of these would you choose as good examples of statements of principle or... So are, are, do any of I, them communicate, are, are any of them a good pattern for communicating a, 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 a sea change uh, in the way we think about something? So I do have a thought I put in in 2004, so it's ancient, and I haven't updated it in, age, in ages either, because last update is 2022, where I added something to it, um, that has these, and I couldn't tell you much about these, and I don't like the company eBay at all, so I'm wondering what the hell eBay is doing here in the first place. Uh, but at one point they had a value statement that I liked. So this is a starting point and I'd have to go back and refresh my memory on all of them. I remember Meatball Wiki. I bet you this page is no longer there, but maybe it's in the archive. Meatball. Ah, oh, really? That's bad. <laughs> that, that was very funny. So the page is definitely not there, uh, except it's not, that looks like a bad link. Uh, let's find out. Meatball is still around. So here's here's the link. Usemod.com apparently got bought, taken somewhere else. Uh, where's Meatball gone? Meatball Wiki. Meatball's in the Wikipedia. Meatballwiki.org. How about that? Yep. 
Okay, so let me see if my, my if this one is at use mod, I will change this one and then we can, it is, look at that. Edit location, hot damn, let's fix this. While y'all are thinking about what next, I'm trying to pull my menu. Well, actually, I, I do want to return to something that about, I just, I just took those first principles and asked AI to convert them into simple rules. And I think there's a merit to it in that uh, it does simplify things and make it more accessible to other people. Uh -huh. So, I mean, I think in complexity science, there is a distinction between first principles and simple rules. Um, and whether that's useful for near books or not, it's a separate issue. But um, I'm just uh, going back to that point about languaging and make it clearer. So a nugget can be, a pr first principle can be reduced to a, a a simple rule, uh, which if you're trying to communicate to different people, uh, you know, makes it more accessible. Yes. Uh, here is the meatball mission page that I was looking for that, thanks Pete, now I've updated some of the meatball links. So they believe in barn raising, that's, that's a major part of their mission. We are public art, which I love. Um, here are some keywords to help you find your way around. We're part of a community of practice on how to run a good wiki. Uh, let me put this link in the chat. What was Meatball about, or what is Meatball about? Um, it's it's a wiki culture, wiki practice um, wiki. It's it's a wiki about the practice Wikis. of wiki. Yeah. And uh, it was an important community in the early days. Meta wiki. And, and has a lot of smart stuff in it, even even today. You'd already put the chat the, over there. Uh, the, the values are really good. Actually, just, just what you said, uh, Pete, made me uh, reflect about uh, what are the virtues and values of Neo books? And why it's important to distinguish between the two. The two being? Well, the, the difference between uh, virtues and values. I mean, what is the, uh, I mean, if one could imagine what's the value proposition for Neo books, what's the virtue proposition of it? Uh, you know, we tend to be locked down in language of um, values rather than virtues. There are over overlapping constructs, but there's some important differences. My way of trying, and I, I need to record this, but my way of trying to explain some of that is through uh, an imaginary case study or a, a vision of a future where nuggets are shared by students, scientific researchers, journalists, policy analysts, and others, and business folks um, who are talking through and with the nuggets so that they have not full agreement because there can be, as we talked either last week or week before, there can be like similar nuggets that are just not the same thing. And there's the friction between them is super interesting and useful. So the juxtaposition of, yeah, when you say freedom, you mean this thing. When I say freedom, I mean this thing. That That's exactly. an interesting, interesting friction, right? Yep. Um, but but the, the scenario I envision that I love is imagine if our conversation were around these artifacts that allowed us to say, yeah, we agreed last month that this thing over here is a complete functioning lie. Um, I, during during the, the, the first Trump campaign, I had this wish list item that journalists would get together and say, hey, we're going to use a wiki or something like that. And we're, we're going to agree on the six or eight lies that Trump tells all the time. And then we're going to make a pact, a pinky pact with each other, so that we're going to give him three chances. Each time we were standing in front of him with cameras at a rally, he gets three chances. Uh, at, at the first time he mentions any one of these six or eight, pick, maybe we even use a clicker because there's clicker training, right? So we all mm -hmm. found our little our little cricket clicker. At the second one, we click again. At the third one, we click, fold down our cameras and leave the room in a procession all together. Shut down the lens that feeds Trump's uh, media machine so yeah. that we can indicate that we're aware that we're part of the problem, blah, 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 blah. In order to pull that off, they would need a persistent place to agree on what are those things they want to do. Now, that could be just somebody's blog post, but for me, 
that's a nugget of an agreement of whatever. That, that's a compositional nugget of several different things, a couple of which would be, why are we even doing this? We're doing this because we know that you know, for Trump, all attention is good attention. So we are attention. We need to figure out how to break that. That would be piece mm -hmm. of piece of the logic of it all. So, I, sorry, that's that, that's maybe more explanation than needed. But for me, the presence or existence of thriving communities who understand how to use nuggets and share them for meaningful purposes is the is the, the punchline, is the value. Which is one yeah, of the reasons I mean, that. Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, I mean, if you take the two nuggets and say it's, uh, you know, if you use um, uh, Jonathan's Hyde book, The Self-Righteous Mind, and comparing the conservative mindset versus the liberal one and the different priorities they have in the value systems that set up these differences, you could say, well, the values divide us. Now, what are the what are the virtues that will align us using, you know, the purple, I mean, the, the forward party, for example, which is trying to move beyond dysfunctional polarization? I mean, I think in terms of the processing of this is how well is Neo Books going to be able to navigate between different priorities and value systems in such a way that we can use our values that finds the middle ground so we can con consistently move forward rather than going backwards. I think you're talking directly to what Jose is trying to build. Uh, because Good. Good. because, because, because he, I, th I think what Jose would like is an infrastructure that allows us to point out, hey, this statement comes from this values framing, and yeah. this statement comes from this other values framing, and here's how we might compare and contrast and improve them or whatever. And Jose, correct me if I'm wrong, and also you wanted to jump in. Yeah, it, it, that's right in some way. Um, it's It's really just, it's kind of a forcing function for not saying shit without having some backup <laughs> right it's like oh i like this okay great you like that that's your opinion wonderful uh but if you say this is truth it's based on what and what backs that up and what backs that up and what backs that up and at some point we're building no a, a knowledge tree if you will um a structure of knowledge that that has that that we can manipulate and get better at and validate and understand and that's what science has been all along but we as common writers of books don't think that way we don't we we just sort of like here's a narrative we write the narrative and we try to sort of say you know here's here's pointing to some folks that that said the things we liked they said but it's not done in a rigorous way and and my effort explodes the second that my book is done and I'm like okay right and the next person goes and builds the same thing nobody's building on each other's things and nobody's exactly. building on this information so for me building having structure and and these bricks blocks a conceptual concept for me works in my brain and with a purpose the the nugget isn't in of itself the purpose the purpose is to build something that is coherent and supportable and build upon so that the next person comes to to this structure and they go oh i have another block let me put it on top and i have another block let me put it on top and we're we're growing as a society rather than mm -hmm. oh let's start at ground zero again here's my pile of shit and then you know let's go fight about our piles of shit um sorry to get Vulgar, no, but it's just that's okay you know, we can handle it we can the, take your the, shit all the norms have been rearranged anyway so hey <laughs> um pete beat me to raising the hand so go for it pete um i like that jose and i and i'd like to contrast building on top of versus being able to replicate blocks and put them together in different ways mm -hmm. yeah and and it's not on top of 
in a single foundation, right? Yeah. That that's not the intent. Here's my foundation, and everybody has to use that foundation. That's not the intent. It's how do we how do we have foundations? And it's okay if you have a different foundation, but but start from something rather than throwing stuff out in the ether that has no basis for. And and I think another part of it for me is is not build to distribute, but rather um, create pools of nuggets that create building. So the it's so so the it mm -hmm. should be a verb rather than a noun. Um, so the the act of neobooking is taking nuggets and recomposing them, adding new nuggets, killing the ones that that don't make sense anymore, or something like that. But the for me, I I I, re, I come to realize it's the conversation of how the nuggets are put together and showing people, hey, I've just I've just made my my bricks together this way what do you think and having them say well that's great except let's rearrange it a little bit so mm -hmm. it's in the it's in the playing with the legos that you transmit the transmit knowledge and wisdom um and learn uh learn knowledge uh, and you know and and and, and enact mm -hmm. humaning mm -hmm. Yeah, I would like to add another dimension to that, which is uh, the virality of nuggets. Can you create a nugget that such that the people want to share it and disseminate it? That's the and, goal for sure. Okay, well, I just That's wanna, absolutely the goal. Okay, well, I, I want to share with you that I <laughs> actually wrote a song with neo books in it. And I will share you the verse, and if you feel so inclined, you can play it. Um, you can see the verse there. There's a link to it. And I think songs could be a dimension uh, to this notion of nuggets. Very cool. And you sent me a link to this in email earlier today. Earlier today, yeah, you, you you could you could just play you could just play like the first one minute of it, so it gives you a feel of what you can create. You have to bear in mind it takes me about ten attempts to come up with the music that matches the lyrics. I have to unshare and reshare my screen because I didn't check. No, share. don't worry about it. Don't worry. I, I, I didn't okay. check um, share my computer sound before going in. Um, there we go. Bop, bop. Now I can do it. All right. Uh, now I got to find the chat again. And let's try that. Everybody hear that? Yes. Closing mindsets, closing doors, content marketing machines teaching what to think, not how to think. <clears throat> Indoctrinate thoughts. Perceptions, feelings, cold trances, binding blind, loyalties fixated on certainty and simplicity. Oh, the perils of reductionism, self righteous fundamentalism. Everybody can listen to the rest of it when they want to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I like that. That was, that was cute. Uh, Rick has a whole bunch of songs on Zuno. Yeah. You can uh -huh. go find his library and listen to them. He's been he's composing the lyrics himself, correct? Yep. And then feeding them into Zuno and choosing a genre and uh, voice and all that kind of stuff. So. 
you know, there's a whole series on this. Um, there's an article that I shared with you. I think there's about, I didn't put them all in, but there are about eight songs in there related to this. So, I mean, even you could even break it down so that the verse could be a nugget. That's correct. Um, yeah. The, uh, uh, <clears throat> let me, uh, sorry. sorry. Go ahead. I just wanted to come back because I had a question from earlier. Um, and I, I want to understand this better on, on your principle. Number three is first principles thinking, which we were just talking about. Um, if Steve Bannon or Jonathan Miller want to write a Neo book, but don't deign, don't wish to put their supporting first principles underneath their thoughts, should they be prohibited from writing a Neo book? Should we make it, should we cancel them in Neo book land? Or should we let them write whatever that comes into their freaking heads and then have other people be allowed to annotate their thinking and say, oh, yeah, this comes from this lineage of white Christian nationalism, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Because I'm misunderstanding. I have this feeling like you want everybody to author from first principles. And I think there's a whole bunch of people who are just spewing bullshit. But if we can tag them <laughs> with their thinking and put marker die on them that says, yeah, yeah, we hear this all the time. And this is the root of that thought. It comes from uh, the the daughters of the Confederacy and whatever bullshit from from way back when. I think that's valuable, but I don't see most humans able to write from first principles. That's my problem with including this as a principle of neobook as a, as a top level principle. Is like I would I would I would skip trying to write a neobook if I were told coming in that you need to. Um, buttress everything you say with where it came from. So I may be misunderstanding what you're saying, or we may have a practical difference on how this works. So first of all, I don't think there's such a thing as writing a neo book. Well, I'm doing, one, I'm doing one right now. So I think there is, but <laughs> okay. But, but what I'm saying is it's, it is in, in my view, it is in the management, as, as what Pete said, it is in the management of information in a way, in the process of managing information and, and of taking ideas and validating those ideas, building on those previous ideas and creating new ideas. It is that process that is interesting to me. If you assemble that into a book, so-called neo-book, you're you're creating something from that. If that neo book has good relationships with that knowledge base, that structure, those bricks, nuggets, whatever you want to call them, they are. <clears throat> they, there is, then you're sort of running that. If you're just creating a whole bunch of text that has lots of good links to we, to these things. And it's like, oh, this I already mentioned over there, and that I already mentioned over there, and I mentioned, and you mentioned, and she mentioned, and he mentioned. To me, that's that's not what I'm talking about. When I say first principles, I mean that the thing I just said has some grounding in some lineage of thought that can help you if you agree with that lineage of thought, can help you build on that. And if you don't know that lineage of thought, then you can learn that lineage of thought and you can validate it against other lineages of thought and 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 have some sense of, of whether this makes sense through that lineage of thought. I'm unclear from your answer if you answered my question, because my question was really pragmatic. It's like Jonathan Miller wants to write a neobook. He hears about him. He writes what comes out of his freaking head. He is unwilling, personally unwilling, because it will unmask his ne you know, nefarious beliefs. I don't know why, but he is unwilling to do anything about foundational beliefs or when he's writing things in his screed, it's like, because of course, men are superior to women and this and that, which are fun fundamental beliefs, right? Mm -hmm. Great. Um, but someone else can come along and sort of organize it better. And I'm good with that. I'm not sure you're good with that. If you want to write a book, right? If anybody wants to write a book, anybody wants to write a book, today they can and do. We're not going to limit anybody from writing a book at any point in time unless we ban books. 
which some folks would could like be coming. Do. Yeah. Um, my thing isn't that if you want, this is what I was trying to answer. The act of writing a book is not the act of doing neobooks. Neobooks is not the act of doing a book. You can write a book as an outcome of neobooking. That's that's an output. You could do songs as an outcome of neobooking. You could do all kinds of stuff as an outcome of neobooking. If somebody wants to neobook and participate in this in this community of knowledge, lack of a better way of describing it, then great, they can participate. If they choose to write a book and call it a neo book, to me, you know, in my mind, and this is your idea from a neo books perspective, I had the same idea in different ways, but in my mind, the the working in neo booking as a as a platform of knowledge has very little to almost nothing to do with a book. It is a replacement of what a book was intended to be in a very time <clears throat> in a time very long ago. That idea that we own ideas is gone in my mind, and that we're playing in a new space and mixing these two things. I think is a disadvantage to us. To say that I'm writing a neo book is in of itself not thinking about neo booking as a new way of, of dealing with information in my mind. And I'm not saying you're wrong or whatever. I'm just saying it, those two things conflict. That was clarifying and really useful. And Pete has something to add. Which will um, solve the entire dilemma, I'm sure, actually. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, I, what I hear you say, Jose, is that uh, neobooking or whatever the verb might end up being is it, it, it conveys something that is fairly wholly different from writing. Um, and, and we should, so we should have, you know, uh, something neobooking versus writing. Um, as as one of our oppositions, I I I have a, a feeling Jerry has a another question. Um, uh, so presuming neo booking is a more efficient way to disseminate uh, knowledge and belief systems. Um, uh, if somebody is composing nuggets uh, or neo books, um, if somebody is neobooking and they have a very different value system than you do, they believe in, you know, um, uh, fundamentalism and uh, discrimination and things like that, uh, hate, hate against people that you mm -hmm. discriminate that against. If, if they if they have that value system and and um, and want to use the neobooking um, uh, capabilities to to disseminate their value system and their beliefs, do we say yay or nay? Um, uh, I, I, it's open. As far as I'm concerned, it's open. I don't think, I don't think you can or should limit people's ideas because at any point, those ideas are coming from some place of truth. And it may be that they've been turned into some inappropriate behavior. But I think the question is, where's it coming from? Where that's the question. That's why I'm so strong about first principle, because it's coming from somewhere. And so let's talk about if, where it's coming from. That I think solves our, our social problems rather than simply ostracizing people. Um I hear you and I, I think I generally agree. Um uh and yet as we design um, uh, information systems and belief system, way, ways, to ways to help disseminate beliefs, ways to convince other people, um, you could design, uh, it doesn't have to be a, a hard uh, refusal, but you could design a system that either explicitly or implicitly biases towards what you believe to be good expression. 
um, mm -hmm. or right expression or coming from a, a, a better first principles position. I, I have a, and I, I think there's a, well, I think this is actually a really important discussion. I have a story <laughs> um, and it involves David Weinberger and Jerry, actually. Jerry and I and <laughs> David Weinberger and a few other technology people were technology and soci soci sociology, sociology people. We're having a discussion and um, I remember really dramatically um, uh, when David kind of tweaked the technologists in the, in the, in the group by saying, uh, maybe you guys don't realize it, but the valuelessness of the internet protocol, the ability for it to carry meaning and information without a value judgment is in itself a value judgment. So he said, mm -hmm. dude, I know some rabbis who would go like, if you just made a system that lets people ship hate around, uh, you, 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 may be think, you may be thinking that you're going, well, I don't care what people ship around. I'm not going to be the judge of that. But by doing that, you have just said, I, I totally approve. And I put hate on the equal, on an equal footing. So, you know, he, he, he didn't prescribe one way or the other, but he said a, a system without values, a, a knowledge management system, an information, an information system that has no judge, no value judgment is in itself subject to, you know, it, it has made a value judgment um, that, you know, uh, and it was really striking and, and uh, affecting for me. So, so I, I think, I don't know that Neil Books is is the internet protocol of the future or not. Um, but I also think that if we say anybody can use it for whatever purpose, we have made a statement that that sounds great kind of in liberal, you know, uh, liberalistic terms and, and also is a, a way of predetermining a future that we may, may not appreciate as much as we think we do. Uh, Rick? Then I want to jump in as well. Yeah, just to build on that a little bit, I, I didn't know what you're going to say, but I mean, it comes back to the issue of virtues and values again, and that is, if 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 truth seeking is a virtue, and you develop a series of first principles and simple rules to um, state claim to truth, even though there may be competing truths, at least you have something. So if something, and I just want to backtrack it very quickly because I was in a, a techie call on Sunday and they were talking about how AI is auto digesting itself so that the signal, the, the noise signal ratio was increasing, which is something, you know, and I said, well, you know, you could reverse that. You can reverse it. So you attenuate the, the signal and reduce the noise. If you build in parameters around which you try and validate the degree to which people have claims to truth. And if something's, if somebody makes a claim to truth, like I just watched a, a CNN of a, a, a Trump sycophant who denied everything, everything that Trump had done with such absolute conviction. And you could see Trump there with glee on his face because it was just an affirmation of his innocence. Then, you know, it, that gets amplified and more people believe it. And so, you know, the question then becomes, are we willing to be able, are, are we willing to set limits and constraints on irresponsible freedom? And if we're not, we've got problems because it always means the dark side. So with the neo books, what are the virtues and values that will honor truth seeking? And what and how would you even begin to describe that in such a way that it would exclude people who are clearly disinformation mavericks? And I'll just say one last thing. Somebody put, put a response in one of my Facebook pages. It was beautiful, beautiful disinformation. And I thought, I'm not going to waste my time with this. But then I thought, what the heck? I'm just going to go into put into Plexi AI. And it says, can you dispute any incorrect information there? Which it did. Well, if we actually had, you know, ethical standards about validation of claims to knowledge that was automatically incorporated on Facebook with reputational scores, the algorithms could upgrade people with higher reputational scores and downgrade people with poor reputational scores. 
But that's not how it works, and we're not willing to do that work. Um, I just wanted to add back a few bits of conversation, the thing I pasted in the chat, which is that um, I don't know half the things I'm building on. I, th I, I think I know a bunch of them. And if pressed over a considerable period of time, I could build the foundation. And if I found foundations that I could agree with and proxy to as mine, which is what I want, I want I want to create an idea space that crystallizes so that when I find Pete's descriptions of how working Wikily is supposed to work <clears throat> and how information is supposed to propagate and, accum and accumulate, I can be like, oh, I love all his nuggets and I can include them kind of as my foundation, but I don't necessarily know where the roots of the foundation thing are. But what he said speaks for me. So I'm going to include it as part of my perspective, opinion, narrative, whatever it might be, uh, or point of view. Um, but I don't know half the stuff I'm building on top of. And if, I, if, you, if, we, if you kept asking me why's, I would tap out real fast because I don't know if I'm building on Aristotle or, or uh, Sun Tzu. Like, like really, I, I'm not sure. And I didn't take any philosophy courses in high school or college. I have a lot of philosophers in my brain and schools of philosophy, but I'm a complete and total amateur. And, and half the time I've followed anybody down into first principles, I wind up disagreeing a lot and thinking, oh shit, if you built everything from these first principles, you would never get to the thing I'm believing. And it, it, for me, it's dangerous to say, uh, I think I told you guys once a long time ago, I heard uh, Dick Foster, the guy who invented the S-curve and was a McKinsey partner, I heard him give a sort of a valedictory speech uh, uh, at, a, at a small event I was at. And he started with, Plato and Aristotle, and then he, he he was building the idea that all of we what we've got now is built on the logical foundations of Greek philosophers, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, you asshole. Um, because I, in my brain, that is absolutely not true, and in fact, dangerous. Um, and so there are so many twisty alleyways down where there lay dragons that I find the excursion can consume the rest of our lives and not get to where we're debating constructive discourse and letting people with intolerable ideas. I, there's a line somewhere between hate speech and the invocation of genocide or murder or whatever that we need to not tolerate. That should not be allowed. But somewhere near that boundary is a space that campuses should be happy to, to entertain. The, the whole idea of you know political correctness and canceling of speakers and all that is just and stupid. Um, but but I'm I'm worried. I'm worried because I haven't personally experienced an excursion into the logical foundations of something that really satisfied me. Uh, that said, I think I can give you the gut feel foundations that I'm building my stuff on. It's all in my brain. It's not tidy by any means. It's a it's a jungle in there, but it's not an unkept jungle. It's more of a garden forest, a garden orchard, a forest orchard. Um. So I have a different perspective. Sounds which excellent. Is, I expect that. Which is that hate is a reaction, not an action, and. So people who are in the state of hate are reacting to something. Um, and and so to to give them to give somebody who is spewing hate, acting out of hate, a, a you know, to blame them without understanding what's causing them to to react in that way. Um, doesn't get us anywhere because it's a feeling. Somebody has been exposed to something that has caused them to feel that state of rage, of hate, of whatever it is. And so if we keep looking at hate as the thing that, and I'm using that as just an example because you used it, mm -hmm. as the thing that we have to, oh, you got to keep the people with hate out of here. I'm not and saying we, hate. I'm saying, hey, all Jews should be killed. That's hate speech. That 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 needs to somehow be gated. The fact that you might hate people, movements, Democrats, whatever, totally legit for me. I, I get that. I'm not trying to gate that at all. I'm saying that there's a fence somewhere out mm -hmm. there where you're basically trying to incite a riot and get people killed that should not be allowed. Uh, 
so yeah, we, we're, we're on, uh, there's, there's a, there's a gap there for me. Okay. Um, I so think you, that, you would, I think you that somebody being that. able to say that, 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 that somebody saying that is not in of itself, something that we should prevent them from doing unless it's causing harm directly. I think that the conversation that that has, that that brings about is not one of blame, but one of understanding. And why do you, do you hate them? Oh, they killed my family. Okay. Well, yeah, if they killed my family, I'd hate them too. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Um, and, and we could say, well, I wouldn't hate them and all of those other nice things, but the truth is I probably would. Um, how do we address that? There's been some wrong done to you that is causing you to feel this way. And how do we address that? To me, that's part of this first principles concept. And I'm not sure that first principles is even the right words, but that, that we draw back from where we're at, where we're arguing, because very often when we draw back from that, we find cause. Mm -hmm. And when we find cause, then we find empathy. And when we find empathy, we find solutions. I like that. And, and so for me, it, it's not like, I think, I think this is this and you think that's that. And let's argue about this endlessly forever. Because we're not, whatever state you're in, whatever state I'm in, that's caused by something else. What What's the cause behind all of that? So it's sort of a root cause analysis for society in some strange way, maybe that you're looking at. It's it's a it's a combination of of understanding the the physical realities of life and bringing those physical realities to bear. Right, I'm still an animal. I'm still going to react in the way that I'm going to react because that's nature, and so causing me to to feel like I'm a horrible person for feeling the way I do doesn't help me at all. It only pisses me off even more, right? But I feel what I feel mm -hmm. and I don't choose what I feel. So how do we go beyond these feelings, whether I'm on the left or on the right and, and, and on the Palestine side or the Israelis, you know, th they're all the same issues, which is people are doing harm to each other and no one's dealing with the harm they're dealing with the outcomes of the harm mm -hmm. thank you sorry to go on no don't be sorry that was great uh pete rick are you next or i don't know i don't care let's go ahead pete um thanks jose um I, i'm still interested in covering uh n deliberate misinformation um, done at kind of in in kind of a commercial sense uh, rather than a personal sense. So we know today that there are people in the world who have probably for them righteously decided um, that they want to influence people, and so they either themselves or you know by their agents they they spew misinformation. Um, they say that this person is coming to kill you and your kids. This person is coming to kill, you know, take, take away your job. I, I, you know, I don't hate them, but maybe you should hate them. I don't hate them, but maybe you should kill them. Um, so there's a, there's a, you know, there's a, and, you know, and, and some of those people are just doing it for commercial benefit because somebody else hired them. I, I think, um, and I think a lot of people who are behind that are, in, they're not hateful, they're not angry, they're actually just righteous. They're saying, well, mm -hmm. I have a belief system that says that all you have to do is, is uh, work hard and um, God will reward you and you'll become a millionaire just like me. Um, uh, you know, and, and they can say that righteously because they accidentally, it accidentally happened to them. And then, and then they can make uh, information and policy decisions and things like that that end up harming people. 
Um, I, I think along with the misinformation thing, there's another thing, which is I, where Jerry was kind of going, there's an incitement thing, right? Saying I hate X, Y, Z is different from, um, uh, hey, uh, I, I, I'm going to get you riled up. And, and I think it would be really good if X, Y, Z ended up dying um, because of, you know, because he or she is an evil person and deserves to die. When it, when it turns into incitement, rather than hate um you know i i think information system architects and information system managers kind of like i think where jerry was going we we have a responsibility to design systems which slow that kind of act activity down a lot um or chill it um uh not because we don't want to engage the parties behind that, um, but because uh, because demonstrably, uh, like uh, observably, we know that um, that incitement can be virally contagious amongst humans. So if you have an information system that is just letting you know, let's let's people pour, pour poison in the broth, and you're going, well, we're going to like you know, whoever gloms onto whatever's in the broth, we're going to. Uh, help them promote their thing. If people start glomming onto the poison, your and your information system helps that bloom, you've got a problem. So maybe I'm naive, but I think that that's an old paradigm fear. That uh, that's my sense. An old paradigm theory or fear, fear, like that 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 I think that part of what happens in this new paradigm is that things change in the way people see things in the first place. So you so think I, we're beyond we're beyond the Rwandan genocide happening again. No, 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 no. No. Like, that's what I it think, sounds like you're saying. I, I think that could happen every day if, <laughs> anywhere. Okay. Um, what I'm saying is that I'm hopeful that something like this which is emerging. This isn't happening from Jerry's brain or anybody else's brain. It's happening because we're at this stage in, in life, and I bet you there's half a dozen other groups of people, at least, having this conversation, um, talking about this emergence of this need for this kind of thing. And I think that only happens because we're at a stage in our evolution as society, as humanity, that there is something changing that we're actually having this conversation as a possibility that something like this is possible because we've evolved to be able to get to a new place and that this new place has the potential of being so different that the, the lens with which we see information as non-proprietary, as, as a collective, collaborative environment causes us not to go in, in there and see things as competitive at that human level, but competitive at the idea level, at the, at the does this really resonate support? And so somebody who goes in and plays in that playground, really plays in that playground, I don't think is going to for the most part, have those intentions if they're really playing in that playground. If they're just, you know, bystanders who are going to come in and, and want to hack at things, sure. That, or that or hired understand. mercenaries is the thing that I worry about. And, and possibly, because I think that's kind of outsiders deciding, well, we're going to go destroy that, that person's uh, wonderful garden. Um, but I, I, I'm not worried about it within the context of the of the community itself. I think that the community changes uh, what it is that we're doing. That's my sense. Oh, thanks. I'm hopeful I, that that's true. I, I apologize. I've got a call coming up. I, yeah, I, I hate to drop yeah. off now, but I will. Uh, that's, thank you both. Thank, thank thanks, you all. Everybody. This is a really valuable call. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Rick, do you want to go quick while there's two of us still here? Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll try and be as quick as I can. I I, I like the, the notion you put in e-booking there. And the, to me, that's an evolving process. 
and I would like to put out the idea that any neo book should not be com- should not be written by one person. It should be done by a group of authors, and that the authors themselves have proteges of people who are involved. So the idea is that it's a living book that's ongoing. It never ends, as we've described before. And actually, I just did a, a, a an AI search on what is the virtue proposition for a living book, and I put it into the the chat there. And I came across a book which I was surprised to find and need to say <laughs> called Virtuous Proposition. Um, and I, I would I would challenge us to think about what is the virtue proposition of neo-booking. I prefer that term because to me that shifts from content, more from content to an evolving process, an emergent ongoing process of developing learning communities. And as you say, Jose, in a non-proprietary way. Is this the book, it, the virtue proposition? Is this the right book? Yeah, that's the one that I found. I just okay. did. A, I just did. A, I, I'm not you, recommending it. I just. That's just, fine. You just book. called it virtuous proposition. I was wondering if it was maybe a different book, but this. this oh no, one. virtue proposition. Slip the tongue. Thank you. Go ahead, Jose. <clears throat> I was just uh, because what Rick just said, uh, I think is is really important, and I think it's something that you're struggling with, Jerry. Um, the, the, if we're neo booking by default, we have a collectively written the nuggets. Okay. And that the, the nuggets in of themselves, whether I assembled them all myself or not exist in the commons and, and that the assemblage of these nuggets into some prose that turns into something that's encapsulated is an act of delivering a a specific message. To me, the idea of a book that I am writing still goes back to the old the old system, right? The, 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 the existing thing. Exactly. And exactly. whether it's called a neo book or not, right? The assemblage process of nuggets is a very different thing than the writing of a book, even if it's called a neo book. And so I think we're talking about neo booking as the curation process of Evolving ideas. Curation. And the assemblage part as a as a secondary ability outside of that. Not outside as in external to, but outside as in not fundamentally neo-booking. That the neo-booking part is, is the thing that's important that can be extracted into these, these assemblages. I, I think I'm with you. I think I think the process of writing a neo book, if you will tolerate me thinking of it as one book as being one particular kind of output, requires you to do the neo booking that you just described, which is what are the relationships between these things? What are the, what are they based on? How does that all work? So I, I like the idea that this is an an active verb rather than an output. Neo books is called neo books again. Mm-hmm. Because, mm-hmm. because neo books are cultural bait. It's just bait, and and it's a very well known cultural artifact. And I am trying to write a neo book that gets published as a Kindle readable book, in order to draw people into the web of active, lively ideas being expressed as nuggets with conversations around them, with links between them, with all the stuff that we want. So and yes, what I think I would say, <clears throat> and I'm saying this, I think in part from Rick. I don't think you should be writing that book. You should be writing that book. That 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 the neo booking process should lead to that book. I think that if I don't write that book, nobody will right now. And I think that a, a, a many hands version of it will not be as crisp. No, I'm not suggesting that. Okay, I'm suggesting that if you were to say, "Hey guys." I'm going to assemble something and here's all the nuggets I've got. Here's all the nuggets that I'm putting together. 
and allowing people to play with the nuggets, not the book, not the writing, not the assemblage, but the nuggets mm -hmm. gets us to the closer to the place of neo booking. Yeah. Than than already saying, here's my book. What do you guys think? So we're still saying the same thing. Um, all the nuggets that I'm writing are on Massive Wiki right now on an open GitHub repo. Anybody can find them. I am safe through obscure. In the form of a book. No, they're currently in the form of nuggets that can roll up into a manuscript that can be squeezed can you out. Toss a, can a you book. toss a URL? Sure. Uh, hold on. If I could just, just chime in here a little bit on this theme, and, and I'm going to use medical mu musical metaphors here. Yeah, so do I musical metaphors so that can be continued next week. And that is, uh, are, are we, do we have a, a conductor of an orchestra or a jazz quartet? And uh, they're very different. One has, one is much more improvisational. And so I just put that, just put those contrasting metaphors out there for future discussion. So do you know what, so where's the nugget? I just put I just put Jerry's nuggets. I just put a link in the in the chat, which is the table of contents for a book about design from trust. The nuggets are the pages I'm I've included. I've sort of basically described a path, a logical. Think of this page as a table of contents for a book. This is my point. It's kind of going the other way around, right? That's fine. If you drill down into the content of the nuggets, you'll see that they are intertwingled, that they are interrelated, and that they are openly available on GitHub because Pete hasn't evolved Massive Wiki to have easy conversational technology. It's hard for somebody else who doesn't know GitHub. If you knew GitHub, you could fork my repo. You could then send me pull requests and improve any of my nuggets today. So where is where do I get to a nugget? Because I'm clicking on benefits of design for from trust. That's totally different, right? Go to nuggets are really powerful or wherever. But I, I I don't I don't I I haven't finished this thing. Okay, I'm just blind. wondering. A lot of the pages there. are empty. They're placeholders because I know that these ideas are in this sequence, but I haven't written the nuggets yet. I think I'm, I think I may have gotten to the wrong thing. Let's see. I'm so, I'm looking at DFT book contents. That's fine. Is that uh, is that what you're referring to? Yeah. So go to benefits of design from trust. Click on that. Okay. Uh, shit. I'm trying to find a page that I've actually filled out. Now let's go back. Um, principles of design from trust is right now just a list of pages, but uh, these. Uh, I, I need to go through and write all these up, but but th this is basically the table of contents of a chapter. Yeah. Well, I'll take a look at it. Yeah. Uh, the the more. I mean, to me, but but yeah. actually, this to me it brings up a point that if if one were developing a community where people were interacting with you in this sort of. Uh, um, prodromal phase of, of, of coming up with something that becomes sort of um, codified temporarily and evolves ongoing. It's a different process. It's, it's you know, I, and it's, it's difficult to do as well. But I think that's, uh, you know, how do you develop a community around this that helps, interacts with the nuggets, that informs you, you learn from that community so that it evolves into something that can can continue to be knee booking, not a knee book. So I will just say that today's call, this call, was a great and lovely example of how that would work, <clears throat> because we've been writing co collaboratively the mission statement for neo books, and I mm -hmm. think we got somewhere. I think we really made some really nice progress. I'm very happy with this, this conversation, and this is what I hope they all are like. But I will point out that we're not done with a mission statement for NeoBooks. Oh, no, 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 no. And oh, we no. may not be done for three more calls like this, focusing on the same damned page of prose. So I'm realistic about what it takes for groups collectively to come up with something. So my take is, unless I take a stab at the whole work at once written by me now, with the full knowledge that every one of these is a nugget that we can have this conversation over and other people could do pull requests or whatever, whatever, whatever down the road. I, that's why I'm writing on Massive Wiki, even though Massive Wiki doesn't have these features yet. <clears throat> but I'm doing that because Markdown on GitHub is a well-known collaborative arena, right? Well-known. 
And I'm going to be starting to tell my story a lot more, not this part of the story so much, because this is more obscure and a little bit technically difficult to sort of grok. So I'm not leading with neo books and this, this stuff, but this is deeply important to me. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so I, I think we're on the same page. I'm just trying to say that unless someone takes, and, and you know, right after the design from trust book, I want to write a book about neo books <laughs> and that one for sure is going to be collaborative because we're all going to have inputs and in all the different moving parts. Yeah. But my book, yeah, I, love, I, trust, I, don't, I don't have a posse right now of people who are who all understand, understand design from trust and can co-author it. But, I, yeah. but if I put out a first pass and then any of its component parts is remixable, improvable, et cetera, et cetera, we're off and running. And if I attract people who think design from trust is a good idea and want to use it in different ways, that's off and running as well. So I misunderstood you. I thought you were writing a book about neo books. I'm also doing one of those. There's a table of contents for that as well. Right. In the, in the same wiki. Right. The and new might, book's introduction. Bingo. Okay. Well, that's the intro paragraph, but it's not the full table of contents. I think there's a table of contents. Let me just see if I got it out there. New book's intro. Yeah, go to the uh, go to the bottom of the page and see. Mm -hmm. Uh, pages that link to this page, Neobooks book contents, the TOC, and you'll see a very thin uh, table of contents there for a second Neobook. Conversation to be continued. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know I if need you're to run. transcribed. Yeah, same here. Okay. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. We've got to go. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. That Bye. was great.